easiest one. I'd like to introduce everyone to Pat Oldenburg. She is joining us from the State of Alaska Division of Elections. I worked as an election worker, a chair, and a field worker. And got to know Pat through the process of um, doing that and was really impressed and invited her to come over and work with us for our election cycle. So she'll be with us in the spring and then go back to the state for their election. So it'll be really great for our office and for the state's office to have continuity between the two. So I'm really glad she's here. Understood the sense, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, does. it does. Do you want to tell anybody, everybody, something about yourself and what you're doing? And well, I retired twice, and I can't make it stick. <laughs> <laughs> I retired from the state, and then I retired from Nordstrom's after 19 mm -hmm. years. So, but I can't stay home. So, um, when the state asked me to come back just to do the recruiting, because nobody wants to do the recruiting, um, and I love doing it, so I don't have a problem making you know cold calls and nagging people and get your paperwork in. <laughs> and um, people and organization are are my big thing. So. And you need those two skills to be able to work with elections because you need a lot of bodies and you need everybody happy <laughs> <laughs> as much as possible <laughs> when you're dealing with human beings. So that's kind of what I'm about. She recruits people at the grocery store. We <laughs> 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 the guys that work in the coffee shop down here. I mean, I, I recruit everywhere I go. I can't, if I go to a party, I'm, almost everybody at the party ends up working. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, at, when it's election time, they're kind of leery of inviting yeah, me to the party. They're just like, like, I'm not scratching my much. head. I'm not going <laughs> to put my head back. <laughs> so, I don't know. Perpetual recruiters. I volunteered and worked at the state election in November so um, I could learn as much as I could and so Pat put me with experts so mm -hmm. she had me with the class you know the top the, the A team and I learned about um, receiving and it was really good we kind of had a little fight, you know, when people brought their stuff in. It was, come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, so everybody's fighting. We have four teams that receive equipment. Everybody fights over who gets to check somebody in, so. Mm -hmm. But then you also see all the types of equipment and what needs to be where, and it's, uh, and everybody's pretty tired by that time of the night, so you have to have a lot of TLC for them because they've been working 16, 18 hours. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. hard one was, you know, Pat had given us instructions about how to check things back in, and we had we had done it, and she said, oh, just check if you have any questions, and there was one team that just happened not to bring their AccuVote machine back. And mm. so we check them in, and we said, well, just a second, we have a question, and so we called Pat over, and Pat said, you need to go get it. Yep. <laughs> you have to have all your equipment in your possession all the time. So I said, you need to turn around and go back and get it. So they did. I bet you next time they won't forget <laughs> anything. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't the Gerdwood. Yeah, the building was still <laughs> No, no, it wasn't Gerdwood. <laughs> no, but oh. they make sure they have everything before they drive in. So. But I am still looking for three chairs. So if you know anybody that's interested in working, have we brought some come. applications down. Other and I'll give everybody a business card so <laughs> they can call me if you have anybody. But we really need somebody for the base that has base access. So if you know mm -hmm. anybody who's retired military or spouse or something, that's one that I've really had trouble filling. My whole crew that I had last time all went to a new base. So <laughs> that's a problem with hiring military. They, they oh, end up moving on. Yeah. Is there just one precinct? Well, I have voting. three precincts I need people for, but the one that's the hardest is the base. But there's just one on the base. No, there's two, but I have one chair for gotcha. um, Elmendorf, and I need somebody for the Fort Ridge. Okay. Which technically, I guess now it's all one base, but mm -hmm. it'll always be two as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Amanda's been really busy too. She um, 
has been working. I usually get emails from her in the evening on the weekends, so she's been working a lot. How many precincts are there now in Anchorage or in the new? 120. And we do all the same precinct locations that the state does. Good. So, but we had the redistricting. You know, the assembly passed that in November-ish, December-ish. <laughs> they passed it and then had to amend it. Um, and so Amanda's working on all of those um, assembly district changes. Are they still in conflict or? working through with what the state has done? Hasn't it been appealed or something? The state's still in interim plan right now. Yeah, yeah it hasn't been finalized. They have to kind of start all over from scratch. So <laughs> the precincts may, boundaries may change again next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's and And I think the, the, the one thing that I understand is that the problems with the state weren't necessarily with Anchorage. No. So I think that could bode well yeah, for good. us. Mostly Fairbanks and in the bush mm -hmm. is where the big issues are. So we're hoping even if there are changes, it doesn't get as far as Anchorage. So. Yeah, That's but we doing. still haven't gotten DOJ approval on the assembly redistricting, and I doubt we will. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, we're moving forward as if we had. We don't have any choice, really. They have to stop or go. Like right now. Have they ever not approved the changes? Well, they not. They didn't approve the states. Well, so I meant yours. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I don't that. know either. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. I don't know. I mean, I guess you know, I've gone through a lot of the DOJ J filings, and, and we have filings in the office back to 1990. So I've looked at a lot of them. There's nothing in there that says, you know, I didn't, you know, sometimes there's requests for additional information or something like that, but that's usually what most of the responses have been. <laughs> so. How will you know when you have that approval? Well, the the way I understand, you know, it's we're we're requesting preliminary approval. You have to submit it. I I think the what most jurisdictions expect is that um, if they're not going to approve it, they'll they'll deny it. But if they don't respond, which I think is my understanding, that that's most. Of, of what happens is so it's preliminary approval and you know this is one of the issues that's been appealed to the US Supreme Court because jurisdictions like Alaska are are not happy with um, the the process mm -hmm. which it, it just means there's just a lot of uncertainty because you just don't know so when you say DOJ, you're talking federal, not yes. state? Yes, oh. the, the federal DOJ is w the, you, you know, I, I'm actually not going to, I, you know, this is just like, you know, on the surface. I just barely understand the surface under the 1965 Voters Rights Act, the state of Alaska has to get um, pre-clearance for any changes, yeah, and okay. some of you, Joyce, you probably know this far better than I do. You have to get pre-clearance because of um, concerns about prior discrimination. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're the only state up here. The others are all in South. Yeah. Right. So there's been allegations of prior discrimination. <coughs> so like with changing voter, box. so that's really what we're submitting is we're submitting something that says we looked at 
you know, the racial and ethnic categories, and we do not Can believe you that they mm -hmm. were, um, Can you that there that? was I any would, change mm -hmm. in that, in the way that um, these boundaries were created. So that's, that's okay. I think. I see. Now, now I'm get the, getting the picture. But, but why but, it's necessary? But the submissions are like like this, you know, and so that's why, um, you know, they get preliminarily approved, and then um, we just kind of sit back and wait. Now the states was different because that was the state I'm supreme sorry. court <laughs> that found a problem with the state redistricting. I guess that discrimination concern would have originated from the days when uh, maybe not all the Native people were represented properly. I don't know. That was yeah. a long time ago. You know, I, I think it has to do with like changing uh, like districts so that, and, and you know, so that if you have a predominantly Native or other ethnic district, and you know, I'll just use the term gerrymander because I know that. And then they would gerrymander that district with another one to d diminish that ethnicity's voting power in that district. So that's a violation of the Voting <coughs> Rights Act. So when we did ours, the the DOJ submission, it shows the percentage of ethnicities in the old assembly districts and then the percentage of different race and ethnicities in the new districts and so you have a certain deviation that you're allowed or percentage that you're allowed for it to be in compliance so who helped you oh uh, there's no way i did this we <laughs> hired a contractor wow it's that impressive looked at yeah. all that stuff yeah, so they have the software to do it, and the same company did the state. And then the Muni Attorney's Office, they have one attorney up there who does most of the, he did the DOJ submission, and he sent it to us and we reviewed it. Um, and then even on some of our tiny little changes, we had to make a submission to the DOJ. So and they go off the census data, mm -hmm. is how they get all of the <coughs> people who respond to that, the racial groups and whatnot. So that's why it comes up after the census, about two years after. Yep. What about, I don't know much about you, Barbara, other than where you came from. Is that an appropriate for you You bet. <laughs> I would be happy to tell you about me. I think some of you know I came from the Ombudsman's mm -hmm. Office, so I worked for the Assembly for about a year and a half. And then they asked me to be the clerk. And um, before I worked for the Ombudsman, I was the executive director and staff attorney for the Anchorage Equal Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I took a leave of absence to come and work for the Ombudsman. And I'll just tell you, one of my staff members said to another one, do you think she'll come back? <laughs> and the other one says, of course she'll come back. This is her dream job. She is like walking in the park, you know, doing um, uh, the anti-discrimination law. So that's what I'd done in private practice before I came to work for the city. I did employment discrimination law and, you know, a variety of other stuff. I worked um, for a plaintiff's law firm here. so we represented almost exclusively employees, but when I was in Colorado, I actually worked for a law firm and we represented public um, entities. So I represented a couple of school districts and um, uh, other public agencies. But, um, so I did some uh, discrimination law like uh, with IEPs and, and uh, student stuff. But um, when I came up here, I and I really liked what I was doing, but I loved working for the assembly down here. It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. So then I, I resigned from the commission and um, 
um, just had it, it was just a great job. So anyway, I've got two kids. Oh. My daughter's 19. My son is 12. And um, I think these guys know that they kind of run my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It usually is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Wherever they go, I'm not far behind them. Or so. Um, what were in Colorado? Were you before? Um, in Colorado, I I lived in the mountains, and I lived in Summit County. Um, that's Copper Mountain, A Basin ski areas. So, you know, that's where I played. And then I moved to Denver and um, went to law school in Denver and worked for this little law firm there. So then my husband took a job up here working for FedEx. So, you know, he came up for a little 18 month assignment and said, I'm not coming back. You know what? Story. Yes. I know. <laughs> I'll go for a year. I'm yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, yep, that was 20 years ago. So, I think everybody's probably, you know, came up for short term, but, you know, we just love it up here. Good for our kids. And so, your kids were born up here? My son was. My, my daughter, actually, my, my husband moved up. And I know this is, you know, how it goes. And I stayed in Colorado because I really like my doctors there. She was born and moved up when she was a week old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, That's a lot of change all at once. A, a new baby and coming up here. It was great. It was, it was, it was just fine, you know. That is. From the bottom. I'm Amanda. And you said you work for the state or you work with the state elections? Yeah, just as an election yeah, chair, a chairperson. I did it in 2010 and it was really good practical experience. So I just best to keep going. Eugene, would you like to introduce yourself yes, and let everyone know who you are? Yeah, my name is Eugene Haberman. Since uh, April 4th, I've been doing an independent investigation for Anchorage officials of best game of uh, April 3rd, 2012. Since then, I've carried it over to uh, boards and commission meetings and other meetings held by the Anchorage, uh, Anchorage officials. But I'd like to point and note is, number one, on the agenda, there should be a place there for comments um, from the public there to be available. And the second is, and a meeting which you have a public meeting the material before you have no copy of information before so public like myself would have a copy it's normal procedure on the open meetings law and such information be available so while you're discussing it or any other public body discussing issues that same information is before the public and looking at it Thank you, Eugene. And, and just so everybody knows, Eugene did ask me this, and we did provide him a copy of the agenda, and I told him that I would find out and let him know there are some things like procedures that are not public. Um, any, personal any, information. Any information before you. And and Eugene, don't interrupt me, please. And so I did let him know that I would find out, and we don't have an extra copy, but if it is public, we will provide him a copy, but I can't do it right now because we'd have to leave the meeting and go make the copy, so I can't do that. Still so, a violation of the open meetings law. Um, so I guess the, I'm gonna let Amanda um, continue with some, Amanda made up the agenda for you, and so, did you wanna tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. <coughs> I have been in the clerk's office for three years now. I started in 2010 as a temporary employee, as an elections assistant, and about, Four months after that, I was offered a full-time position as the License and Minutes Clerk, and I was that License and Minutes Clerk until this August when I was offered the position as Deputy Clerk Elections. So I am grateful to be a part of the clerk's office. I really enjoy working under Barbara, and I'm really excited to be part of elections. We've had, we have a lot of great changes and improvements that we've made, and I'm really excited for this election cycle. So. 
Well, and obviously all of you who are here and were here after last year, and I know the new members that met Amanda, <coughs> know we are really lucky to have her. <laughs> so I'm just thrilled that she is here and has stuck this out. So we will go ahead and call to order the meeting of the Election Commission. First, I'd like to welcome our new members. We had three new uh, members appointed to the commission this fall. Joyce Anderson, Vicki Cantrell, and Petey Strang. So we are welcome. Welcome. That's welcome. welcome. Thank you. And then we'll go ahead and do a roll call. Peggy. Here. Alice. Here. Bonnie. She is excused. Sue. Uh, here. Gwen. Here. Joyce. Here. Vicki. Here. Petey. Here. Old business, there is none, and so we will move on to new business. So, I have information about your election. So, in the code, it specifies that the election commission organizes every January, and we um, recently, uh, the, and the commission is to elect a chair and a vice chair. That's also in the code. And we recently had a little process with the assembly appointing a new member. So we just thought we would allow you to do the same thing. And so we have some um, ballots for you. And typically the way the, um, an election in for a board and commission works is the meeting is turned over to the staff or the executive officer and then the um, balloting begins and after the balloting then the the chair would take over and do the election for the vice chair so i have um if anybody would like to say anything we just made up little ballots for you so we're just <laughs> copying what we did for the assembly <laughs> and and then we would um would be willing for you to just um uh put someone's name in the box for chair and then um, typically then the executive staff would count the ballots and announce who the chair is the um, the the there but I, I think you can make any suggestions or decisions or have some discussion if you would like so I'm not sure can we nominate someone you can you certainly can. Okay. I'd like to Gwen to nominate Gwen. Okay. And may I talk a little bit you about Gwen? <laughs> it's certainly your meeting. You may. <laughs> Gwen was our chairman last year, and without Gwen, we would still be here counting ballots for next year. <laughs> <laughs> she led us through that process, and she was brand new on the board oh, last yeah. year, and she still led us through. Gwen is the mother of 13. Mm -hmm. Her organizational skills are fabulous and her interpersonal skills are even better thank you you're welcome thank you peggy <laughs> what does gwen think i would like I to just second the motion, <laughs> <laughs> motion yeah. But, yeah i would certainly like to um i agree with everything that peggy said and uh, um my experience i think last year was my second year and the first year was um there was a lot of turmoil and and um it, uh, just, it, it, it wasn't al always a very pleasant situation working. There was just kind of a lot of, a lot of tension. And um, when Gwen came on board last year, I thought, you know, I don't know how long I want to do this. <laughs> I, I, I might resign early because I, I, I really didn't enjoy the kind of tension and, and that we were working under the, the first year I was on the commission. And then Gwen came along and I, it was pleasant. I mean, we all worked just as hard, you know, or, you know, but it was just such a nice, a nice atmosphere. I mean, sometimes we had to do things again, but the working, the working conditions, the working situation, the, the um, atmosphere was, was great. It was great. And so, um, yeah. So it, it, even though it was a very difficult process, I think we all worked together very, very well. I, I thank Gwen for, you know, making all that possible. Thank you. I think we had a great team. We really did. Do you yeah. want to do it again? I'd be happy to, but I, I don't have to either way. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm going to hand out the ballots for you, and I will just hand three that way and four this way. Are there any other nominations? No. I should ask if there are, and, and you don't need to make a nomination since it's obviously you can vote. I, I do have a question. Since yes. there was, since it was an issue last year, would it be better to um, count these openly? Well, I, I, I will tell you that um, I think there was an issue last year, and the issue last year was that at the, the minutes of the January meeting indicate that the deputy clerk broke a tie, and there is nothing in the code that would authorize that. In fact, um, the section of the code that I brought regarding the assembly specifies that you vote again until you break the tie. Mm -hmm. um, and there's another provision of the code that in the boards and commissions section that specifies that um, the municipal manager can appoint an ex officio member to a board or commission that is an employee of the municipality, but they don't vote. You know, so um, as, as Gwen is indicating, it was, it, it probably wasn't proper for the deputy clerk to break the tie. And um, if, and, and for that reason, the, the question of whether or not the ballots are public is um, really an, an issue for you to decide. Um, I, I think that, you know, I, I'm going to be one of the people that probably errs on the side of public disclosure. I think we want transparency. However, I can tell you that the Assembly's election of chair is not public. So, um, and, but, but it, 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 that is a decision that's up to, to, up to you. You guys have any thoughts? Or do we have to down? Yes, please. That would be there, a, there, that would there, be there could be if somebody if there were three people. Okay, Gwen Matthew is your new chair. Great. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Say thank you for <laughs> being willing. <laughs> 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 Especially after this year. Last year, thank you for being willing. Yeah. <laughs> after what you went through last year. Yeah. So, um, although we can turn this over to Gwen, here are the ballots for the vice chair. Why don't you just go ahead? Okay, great. Minute. So, um, we can do the same process, and I can just pass these out, and I can do four this way, and three that way. Is there, um, and, and of course, as um, Peggy indicated, if you want to make any nominations or any suggestions, you have any discussions, that is up to you as a body. You can even volunteer. Can we <laughs> discuss for just a second? Absolutely. I don't know you new ladies. You look very qualified. It's really exciting to have you here. Do you have any thoughts, like you are new people, but some with quite a bit of experience, do you, um, do you want kind of your name in the running or, or not? Would you like to add, have everyone talk about their experience? Yeah, I would. yeah that's right. Yeah, I would like that. That's I good. don't know the older, not that they're old in age, but. <laughs> 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 we don't have to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a non issue here. Okay. The, names, the names on the ballot are in the order that you were appointed. So if you want to do it that way, you could start with Peggy and yeah. then Alice. Okay, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. Or even and if you want, even if you'd like to be a vice chair, I, I would, since we're all new, you know what I mean? I, I guess one of the things that I'll tell you is that I think everyone needs to consider being an officer of a board or commission. Boards and commissions, the way they typically operate in the city, 
is that there are usually three new members appointed each year. This one is a uh, is is interesting because you only most of them have nine, so there's three new people every year, and then you serve terms of three years. And there's some continuity and stuff that's important. And when um, when when you have members and some boards and commissions, this one has qualifications. So. Um, all of you are more than qualified, but I do think that it's important that everyone consider that they may have an, uh, a responsibility, I would say, <laughs> to consider serving as an officer sometime during their term on the commission. So, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I just That's got off right. my soapbox. <laughs> but, but if you would, wouldn't mind, I uh, just, you know, I'll okay. let you guys. Well, I mean, I've been on this commission. This is my third year. I was a math teacher, ah, <laughs> good for you. and um, and and I like numbers. And can I nominate somebody for vice? I mean, for mm -hmm. vice chairman too. You can do can whatever. You I want think to Alice meeting. would be <laughs> terrific as <laughs> vice chairman because she's been on. She and I have been on this commission the longest. But she has served in the state legislature. She's been on the school board. She understands boards and assembly meetings and politics. And I just think she'd make a great vice chairman. Okay? <laughs> Peggy was uh, extremely helpful in her tally. The, the numbers. numbers straight. Yeah. Yeah. She was our numbers lady. Yeah. Yeah. P.E., do you want to go next and oh. tell everybody something about yourself? Okay, I am obviously brand new to the commission. Okay. I have worked uh, with the State Department of Elections um, in very minor roles. Um, I would say that um, based on education and working experience that I probably am qualified, but based on my newness to this whole process, I do not feel qualified. And as Peggy said, I this this is our third third year uh, on the commission, and um, it it's been a it's been a in very interesting experience, especially last year. Um, <coughs> that was really it seemed like the job was never going to end. But um, I, I have I have many many years ago served in the legislature and in, on the school board, but and on the Public Utilities Commission where mm -hmm. Sue and I worked with Pat. Uh, <laughs> that so, uh, yeah, um, I've, I've enjoyed serving here. I'd be willing to serve, but uh, uh, if someone else would like to serve, that, that's fine too. I just, I just appreciate being part of the team, and that's what we had last year was a good team. So it's just kind of a, we can all work together, and you know, whoever vice chair is fine. But uh, yeah, I think we'll be a good team again. So, your turn. My turn in the barrel. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Sue Kinney, and I worked for the state for over 20 years. And I have worked with Alice and Pat both. And I agree with Peggy's assessment of Alice. She keeps us on our toes. She knows Robert Robert's rules backwards and forwards. <laughs> she keeps us uh, on point, and uh, I, I think that she would be a very very good vice chair if she doesn't mind <laughs> serving. If she can forget about most of last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm Vicki Cantrell, and like, uh, Pe not Peggy, Petey. Petey. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm not really interested in doing a vice chair position at this time. I need to get the, understand the ropes a little better. Although I did work for the clerk's office 10, 10 years ago. Okay. For about 11 years. <coughs> so I'm somewhat familiar, but, you know, things have changed. <laughs> Somewhat familiar. She's <laughs> she's really kind of um, <laughs> underestimating. Vicki was the deputy clerk uh, in uh, the uh, clerk's uh, office, so oh. she she knows a lot about the election process mm. and is wow. very knowledgeable about she the city. Think. So we're really glad to have her here. Yes, we are. I'm Joyce Anderson. Um, I'm not interested in being vice chair either, being new on the committee. But I do want to let everybody know that I was uh, director of elections for 16 years for the city of Minneapolis before mm -hmm. I moved up here. So I hired election judges, I had optical scan voting equipment, um, we had election day registration, you know, so I mean I have all that background, which is why I applied to be on the commission, I thought it would be interesting. 
especially after what happened last year. <laughs> um, you know, it sort of brought back to me, I, I've always had a passion for elections, you know, so I thought, well, I'm going to apply for it. Um, so I'm not interested in being vice chair, but I would like to say that I probably will bring some of my background into some of the discussions and so forth. And I've already had discussions with my, my personal one-on-one -on -one with them because I couldn't make it to the orientation. Um, I currently work for the legislature. Um, so I'm an alternate on the committee, so I'm looking for filling in when other people aren't able to, is my understanding. And um, we, just, we just treat you as a regular okay. member. Okay, so um, I am the ethics administrator for the legislature. So I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm mm -hmm. able to take some time off and probably be there, but so I need to find out today basically what more the commitment is. But I'm here to, to help with whatever the process is. You're welcome. I will tell you that at our one-on-one um, -on -one meeting with Joyce, one of the things that she brought up was that in Minneapolis they made a deal with the administration that they could hire municipal employees to work at the polling locations on election day because they were short people. But then the, um, they were paid their regular muni wage. So you know that's one of those dilemmas for people to take a vacation day from the city and go work the state election and then they make $12 an hour, you know? <laughs> so that's a, people say, okay, let me see. Should I take a vacation day and get, on? and so what happens my understanding was then people just worked right their regular well, they worked at the elections but got their regular salary so they didn't, didn't have to take a day. vacation and I apologize for an I, I did make a couple phone calls and have not heard back but um, you wanted to know whether we actually had to re have a resolution or whatever and I'll get yeah. back to you on that but it worked out quite well so anyway we're, as we told Joyce and everybody everything is on the table we're yeah. looking at everything and that was a really good idea to solve um, s some possible recruitment problems. So thank you. Wonderful. Shall we vote? Do you want these one? Um, let's let them tally again. Yours? Oh, no, I'm just you gave me. <laughs> you gave me well, so it was like, I was. <laughs> <laughs> so Gwen, we are at the new business number two and we would like to turn the meeting over to you. I know most of the issues are going to be um, staff will report to you, but we'll let you take over the meeting from here. Okay. Um, discuss the changes based on the 19, I mean the 2012 election feedback. Do you have that, Amanda? So our office... Is that in our binder anymore? No, it's just okay. a discussion. Our office has been operating using sort of three filters that everything runs through. And this is mostly based on feedback from the 2012 election. Our, our goal is to have continuity with the state process. We recognize that the municipal elections and the state elections, we serve the same public. We serve the same voters and we have most of the same election workers. So one thing we are trying to do is we are trying to, areas where there's major differences, we're trying to sort of come more in line with the state. We have Pat here, and that is fantastic for this because sort of things that we've done a little bit differently, we're able to see how the state processes and just sort of shift a little bit. So that's, you know, and there's still, there's some areas that will always be different because of the nature of municipal elections, but any area where we can more come in line with the state, we are doing that. The next filter that everything sort of run, runs through is how does this best serve the public? What in our process works best for the public? What creates confusion? What creates um, sort of uh, heartache or anything like that? And we're trying to make changes. 
And then um, the last thing is if it doesn't need to be changed, we're not changing it because we don't want things to be too different because we are recognizing that there are some changes. So those major changes are for our training classes, instead of holding four training sessions at the LUSAC library with a, up to 150, 200 workers at each training session, we are gonna hold 16 training sessions wow. here at City Hall, capping out each at 40 people. Mm -hmm. Um, every single election worker is required to come to a training session. We have election workers who have served for, for years and who are out of town during training and we are not hiring them because we need to get everybody on the same page this year. We're moving forward, we're making changes, and we need everyone to come to training. So we will have, it'll be a pretty intense week for Pat and I. We will. <laughs> I <laughs> 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 <Probably> feel like <laughs> two weeks actually fought a, a war by the time it's over but we recognize that it best serves the public and it best serves our election workers we want that one-on-one -on -one connection with them and it's something that we recognize that you do not get in the Lusack library in the Wildemarston theater when there's somebody up on stage half the people can't hear them people can't hear the questions and people aren't paying attention we want our election workers engaged in the training session. We want people who ask questions to be able to have those questions answered and everybody else in the room to hear them. So that's that's the biggest change. Um, another change that we've made. Can I uh, ask a question right there? Yeah. The board's involvement. Before we have attended training sessions, mm -hmm. how, how do you think That's up to involved? you. You are welcome to drop in to any of the training sessions. Uh, we by no means expect you to come to all of the training sessions um, but if you do want to you know stop by to one of them or you could divide up and have people at different training sessions but you know um, you don't need to come to all 16 training <laughs> sessions if you want to Thank have you. <laughs> Thank you. If, and that's something and that toothbrush and <laughs> as a board you can decide what you want to do uh, we will get you the training schedule and you can decide if you want to have one representative at all the training set schedule sessions and then you divide up the training se sessions between the board or if you don't feel the need to do that or if everybody just wants to attend a whole training session to get a feel for how it is that's all completely up to you however you want to do that so another big change that we've made and one of the reasons why we're meeting in this room today is we've done some remodeling up in the clerk's office and we will at the end of this do a quick oh, tour sure. and, and let you see it um, we will no longer have the absentee in person and early voting in the clerk's office we're gonna have it over in 105 like the state does you know the clerk's office every year we go through this where people come upstairs during the state elections and we have to send them downstairs and then during the state elections they're coming down to 105 so we are aligning with the state. We're going to have the absentee early voting in 105, and the commission will come over here while voting's going on, and then we'll have you move back to 105 after the voting's over for the final count of the ballots. So this will be a little change uh, for the commission, but we think that it best serves the public, and you know we have the ombudsman's office has been really generous to lend us this uh, space and you'll have access to their kitchen so and we will we will work through this some of these changes we're gonna see how they go and if it doesn't work you know everything's on the table as we move forward but it's something is 105 this room or that room? 105 is the the room back there our room where our you've been normal, typically normal. in the past okay and this is the room where we're gonna count uh, just coming up balance. until the election day and then you'll move back over there. Oh, this room won't hold the tables. We are um, we are rearranging this room and they'll we'll bring tables in and we'll bring but it's just the first okay. count. And we can't have that room over there? No because we'll have all the supplies in there. Oh, okay. So okay. we are working with the limited space at City Hall the changes that have been made in the clerk's office too so and if it's not if it's something that doesn't work we will reevaluate it for next year but 
<coughs> something through conversations with the ethics and elections committee of the assembly and sort of the how does it best serve the public that we've really had to evaluate that yeah I, you know I understand that I was, I was yeah. just thinking just the space the space yeah. for the different precincts yeah and we actually got some shelving that we will be having we will bring over here that you can instead of having things laid out you can do it more uh, vertical, vertical. Mm -hmm. okay. so and Okay. We uh, okay. we purchased all these shelvings and we used them to organize all the ballots upstairs and then we brought them over. We brought more because they're really great. So, so it's those those Costco industrial carts. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and they hold 800 pounds and I think we were darn close <laughs> <laughs> with all of those precinct I'm registers sure. to the 800 pounds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So. I, I had one other one if you're done with. I okay, just have one last ahead. one. Um, we are leaving the Lusac Library open on Election Day as a absentee in-person location. This is something that for the three years that I've been involved in elections in our office that has always baffled me because the Lusac Library is this centrally located polling place with great parking, easy access, and we have it open for two weeks before the election for people to come and vote, and then on Election Day, it turns into a regular polling place. That polling place every year gets upwards of 50 question ballots because people still think that all ballots are available there. So we worked once again with the Assembly's Ethics and Elections Committee and presented this to them of having the LUSAC Library be an absentee in-person location on Election Day. Mm -hmm. And, and so it is, and we are really excited about this because out of all of our absentee in-person locations that are open on election day, we have the Ted Stevens Airport, which isn't easy to get to. You have to get in and out or in an hour or you pay. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is UAA, which also has a lot of parking issues and um, accessibility issues. So we are really excited about this one. Uh, we think it's a great location tons of parking and we have a fabulous board that works that location they've all agreed to work on it on election day so we are really excited about that so the one other um, change that we had um, based on 2012 election feedback and I probably should have mentioned it after your election of chair and vice chair is the chain of command and so um, I'm I I actually personally my personal management philosophies are that I am pretty flat I really believe in consensus building and I'll tell you what it takes a lot more time than just being a top-down manager but you know I think we get a better result and so we still need some chain of command issues and one of the complaints last year was then that when people that were working the election are by mail board or um, election commissioners or others complained that when they brought concerns to the clerk or deputy clerk that they they got they felt like they got nowhere and so this year we would just like to let you know that and and we're going to let all of the election workers know except our our precinct folks they they can't do this because otherwise we'd need another person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but 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 the chain of command is of course people get to come to the commission they get to go to the vice chair or the chair of the commission if they have a concern if the concern is not resolved by the vice chair or the chair they are entitled to come to the deputy clerk or the clerk. I would really like you to come to Amanda first to see if she can resolve any concerns. If you are or anyone is not satisfied with Amanda's and my proposal, they are authorized to go to the municipal attorney. The municipal attorney is ultimately the person who defends the municipality for this election as the um, the members that were here last year know when we had questions we called Dennis down we're, we're not we're not guessing we're not um, and interestingly when Dennis came he said let me get back to you and you know he went upstairs did his research and then he came back and and gave you the options of how to proceed 
And so I just want to make sure that that's another change that we are implementing this year based on the feedback that we got last year. So is that everything for two? That is everything. Okay. okay. Next we have a calendar. That is in your binders. It is the second tab in. I have an extra election calendar if you'd like. So we are, our office has been moving right along with the election calendar. Um, we have yesterday, so um, ordinances for the ballot went before the assembly at the January 15th meeting. They were introduced and last night uh, was final public hearing on those. So we are sort of sorting through the meeting from last night and we are putting together all those that passed. In addition to um, the items that went before the assembly, we have seven initiative petitions that have been circulating. We spoke to the sponsor, the petitioner, yesterday to get an, an idea of out of those seven if all of them were going to be submitted to our office and he said only only two of them would probably be submitted so just to familiarize you with the the uh, initiative petition process um, he has submitted language to our office it's sent to the municipal attorney's office for approval and if it's approved <laughs> then he has 90 days to get 7,124 signatures. So it's 10% of the voters from the previous mayoral election. So it's 10% of the voters from this past um, election in April. So once those are turned <coughs> in, we will have to go through and verify that the people who signed are in fact registered voters here within Anchorage. So we have Pat has um, put together a petition board that will come in and work with us next week to using the VREM system verify that you know there's at least 7,124 signatures on each of those petitions and then once that is determined we will um, have all those bonds that will go before the voters currently right now folks are coming in and declaring for candidacy we have um, six assembly seats up we have um, two in West Anchorage because one of our members of the assembly was elected to state house so her seat is on in addition to another one that was termed out this year we have two school board seats also that are on the election and then a variety of LURSA seats so Filing runs all the way through February 8th. And then February 12th is the last day for the candidates to withdraw. And during that period, we will be working with uh, Dominion to prepare the ballots. Um, we will, once that is prepared, we will publish in the newspaper the notice of election. And then uh, in March, we post in the newspaper the notice of bonded indebtedness. 30 days before the election is the last day to register in order to vote on the April in the April 2nd election. But we run another ad in the newspaper with all the polling places. This is especially important this year with the redistricting, you know, working the state election. There was confusion because a lot of people's polling places changed and subtle changes, you know, you used to go to this church and now you go to the church down the street, but it's just important to have that in a distributed newspaper so that people are aware of that. Is there any other um, push for a publication for that other than the newspaper? Our office hasn't quite discussed that yet. Um, we are working on ways to get more information out to the public and I, we have been trying to run more press releases and get out more information. We just think it is important to notify the voters. We have 
discussed <coughs> um, other publications in addition to the Anchorage Daily News. We've discussed the Senior Voice and the Business Journal. Right. We did publish in the Journal of Commerce um, the notice of vacancy for the assembly seat. Um, you know, the, the dilemma is it just increases our costs yeah. if we publish both. So, but we think the senior voice is good because it, it may um, be a group of people who don't use the internet. We're really good about the internet, but we want to make sure that we address other options. It doesn't count as a business of, uh, of a newspaper of general circulation. So it is just uh, it's just an on the on the top cost. It's not uh, anything that we can reduce some other cost for that. Okay. Okay. But um, you are going to use the internet. We have been uh, discussing a social media policy for our office because our goal is to for stay you, connected yeah. with the public yeah. as as much as we can. I wonder if the newspaper would just like, do a little story or a little note. Hey check out your voting place <laughs> <laughs> you know um, I, w I would love to think that and you know I, I will just tell you that I, I think it was over how, how much did we pay for those other ads was it um, like twelve hundred dollars for the notice and you know the print is smaller than this mm -hmm. and um, it it looks like a public notice I did I didn't put it in the public notices. I put it in, the, it was in the A or B section. And I knew it was going to be published and I couldn't even find it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mm -hmm. so, um, it's just so hard to get notice. And then one of the other dilemmas that we have, you know, I've reviewed the code and um, we, we have, the municipality is allowed to publish on the internet. And all of our publications for the assembly meetings are on the website and the internet. We're not required to publish those in the paper anymore. But we are concerned about that because we don't think that it gets the best. Um, yeah, no, but but, but, but it, yeah. even if we do both, I feel like we could do better. And that's why Amanda's working on this social media policy. And once we get that done, we hope that um, we we do a little better but it but it's a dilemma and if you have any ideas you know she's got posters going out on the buses um, they're great colorful um, classy but if you have any other ideas where we can um, post notices or posters you know let us know but I I worry sometimes that you know voting in elections is one of those things as soon as people see it the eyes kind of start to glaze over so but we're looking for for ideas so let us know if you have some and we are we're really even as much as we can thinking out of the box um, one thing another issue we've had is recruiting election workers and Pat brought forward an idea of contacting the state of Alaska chapter of retirees as potential election workers so uh, Pat got the contact for the person here in Alaska and they're gonna run a notice in their newsletter for people that are interested in being election workers so we are really exploring sort of a lot of different ideas but what a great way for folks who've already you know worked for the state familiarity with sort of these systems to come back in and and work again as an election worker so um, so then <coughs> March 18th we got early and absentee voting beginning here at City Hall and at the Lusack Library. So that runs for two weeks before the election. And then the week after that, it starts out at the Chugiak Senior Center. Um, on March 26th is the last day to request a ballot by mail or fax. And then March 26th is also when the Election Commission begins the ballot review. Um, we will run additional ads in the newspaper the day before the election on April 1st. Uh, the notice of election, the polling places, and the bonded indebtedness. And then April 2nd, the regular election polls open from 7 till 8. And then 10 days after the election, the election commission public canvas. And then uh, that following Tuesday, the certification 
at the regular scheduled assembly meeting. Just like last <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, think we did. I think you certified the election three times last yeah. year. So. so we are. Well, if it's a full ballot, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have two petitions and how many um, on props to the assembly? Well, s there's two that had passed before last night. I think there was, there was a quite a few of them on there that are for alerts so they quite a few. fit a small like, area like maybe four or five alerts I know there were at least two there were at least I think there were four or five alerts at once yeah no, so no uh, improvement on getting them off of the regular ballot <laughs> well that passed last night as well so last night we as Amanda said, um, we've been working with the Assembly Elections and Ethics Committee, and we discussed mail-in ballots for the LURSAs and mail-in elections. Um, so we've limited, done limited road service districts. So we've done some research on this issue, and and I think there are are there 18 LURSA elections. So there's so. I mean, like Amanda said, you know, six assembly seats, two school boards, two initiative petitions, you know, six or seven props, we can deal with that. But in addition to that, 18 LURSA seats. There's 18 LURSAs, 31 what? LURSAs. Oh, oh road districts? 30, yeah, yeah. There's and there's 31 service. vacancies within the, the limited road service areas. Yeah, so see, it's even worse than what I said. <laughs> so <laughs> look at old ones. I mean. You know, the regular election would take about this much page, and the rest, two columns, would be lurses. Yeah, right. And half of them weren't even up opposed. Right. So what we most did of them aren't even opposed, and you know, don't even have people that declare. Last year we had, I think, ten of them where no one even declared. So we were down counting write-in votes, mm -hmm. trying, you know, and people are writing in their neighbor. Who doesn't want to serve? <laughs> you know, we're calling. <laughs> So, so what happened was we discussed having the LURSAs by mail-in election. And um, we got uh, an ordinance drafted that permits the clerk to do LURSAs by mail-in election. We, I mean, you know, when this discussion started last July, you know, Amanda and I thought, you know, we were going to get this done. We were going to get the lurses off this ballot. But Vicky's laughing because I think she knows. You know, realistically, it's just not a single year process. And even as we move forward with this idea of doing it by mail, it's two different systems that we'll have to use. We'll have to use the road service area. Um, they have an, a list of everyone who's in that area and then we will need to verify it against the state system to see who's a registered voter so I mean it's you know I think you know <laughs> we were a little naive and we thought that it might be really easy but we're still looking into it we're still evaluating it but it's it's definitely a process of finding out who's a registered voter in that road service area mailing out the ballot and then waiting for them to come back in and then you know running through the process similar to a combination of what the by mail board does and what the commission does so it's so right. we continue to work on and and we don't know what date we want to do this you know for the LURSA you know one of the dates we came up with was January 15th their election would run January 15th to February 15th and but you know we're actually pretty busy right now you know to have added that to our plate would not have been realistic this year but the LURSAs don't they want it done before their construction season starts in May or June but we're not sure that we could get ready for that in April or May to have them do it then and I think you know we're being realistic people in Alaska don't do anything in June, July, and August. <laughs> so then would we want to do it in September? And our office is starting to get busy with other things in September, and we don't know. So so right now, 
you know, I, I think it's really, really an important issue that we have to continue to discuss, but we don't know the answer to it yet. Um, I can get you a copy of the resolution so you can see how it will come about. If, if you have any suggestions, we'd, we'd appreciate them. Um, if, if it's a mail-in election, you know, you may be involved again. Um, <laughs> So we don't we don't know how that would work. Fortunately, as Amanda said, the um, the road <coughs> services do mail in elections for their um, bonds, and so we would copy this system that's over at the permit center, and and they've agreed that we could copy the system, but it involves public notice, you know, meeting with the groups, sending out public notice, holding public meetings. You know, we have to do all of that before we can pull this off. So we just realized we're not ready this year. I'm not sure we'll be ready for 2014, but um, we, we want to keep this issue on the table. Last night when the assembly passed it, they, they asked, what is the cost going to be? And I think Amanda came to this realization that is the cost for mailing ballots, envelopes, and postage, is it going to outweigh this, you know, what we're doing now? And I don't think we know the answer to that yet. So the assembly did ask, they said they wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they wanted a summary of economic yeah. effects. So sure. is the cost less? than doing it at the election. And so we'll, we'll continue to keep you posted on that. But thank you for bringing that up. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it's a big <laughs> issue for us. I mean, one of the dilemmas that Amanda has right now <coughs> is, is it going to be a two page, eight and a half by 11 ballot? Or is it gonna be a two page, eight and a half by 14 ballot, which I think none of us want. Do you have any support on the assembly to combine the uh, hillside area like Eagle River is? And they have just limited numbers of candidates and stuff. <laughs> well, that is, remember that, that issue is much more complicated and yes, there is movement to create a commission that would look at combining all of the LURSAs on the hillside, and then each of the existing LURSAs would, you know, and this is just my general understanding, would have a member on it, which is the same as Subversa up in Eagle River. Um, the The dilemma is there, there, it's my understanding they're having trouble getting people to serve on this commission to study the issue <laughs> <laughs> to, to get it to happen. But, and, and then, you know, the dilemma is, you know, if you like your little Lursa mm -hmm. and like what your little Lursa is doing, you know, there's this fear, why should I join the bigger group when I know my roads are good and we're doing a good job and your roads are crap and now I'm going to have to... So yes. there, there is a lot of, um, there's, there's a little bit of angst about that, but um, Ms. Osiander spoke last night and one of the things that she said was don't take people's lursa rights away oh, you know yeah. <laughs> because people are very sensitive about that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. but but i think it 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 is you're absolutely right that that proposal is out there and um it's it's being considered in one of the documents that passed last night there was a, a new lursa and the administration put in it that it does not favor new LURSAs because it is a huge cost to, to do that for us to administer those LURSAs. That's a holdover from um, when the city combined, you know, when they became a municipality. And that was sort of a gift to those people that didn't want to come into a city. But it's long overdue. <laughs> I think the rest of the community does not realize what expense that costs the regular Anchorage Roads and Drainage people, you know, who are politicking. <laughs> well, I think, I think you're going to hear this discussion, you're yeah. going to continue to hear more about this discussion and we'll continue to get your input because it does certainly have a huge impact on us 
And and although I'm not positive how much we can do, I have asked Amanda to keep track of her time that she's spending on like creating the LURSA ballot. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could get better at this, like maybe next year, we could keep track of the time for having the LURSA candidates come upstairs to um, file their declarations of candidacy. I think Amanda can tell you almost every single one of them has had problems filing because they have APOC requirements, which is just really, um, just really <laughs> difficult for them. So I have, I have a question about yes. the calendar. Um, the um, the dates for the training are here. Do you know those? Please? Yes, March fourth through March twelfth, except the Sunday in there. <laughs> That's okay. Great. Um, the training schedule is on the website, but I'm going to do Do you want me to just ask Tina to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the 4th through the 12th, did you yeah. say that? Yes. And most days, there's a class at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. We're going to get those schedules printed right now so that we can... Okay. And then we have one evening class on s Monday. S Monday. The second Monday. And these are the training? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to get a schedule printed, though. And if you want to call me to find out if the class is, you know, really full or you know, there's lots of room or whatever, you can just give me a call and I can let you know. The days are less populated, so <laughs> it's crowded. So the election judges or whatever term we're using here, they have to call in and schedule the class they're going to attend? Yes, mm -hmm. unless okay. the chair has already talked to all of them and said, okay, my whole crew's coming on this day, and then they all sign up the same day. Okay. Pat's phone does not stop ringing all day long. Why I have I a headset. I usually, it's like I feel <laughs> naked without my headset on, but um, yeah, I just, I'm on the phone all the time. But that's okay, because I need everybody to get signed up for everything. It's really great, because Pat, <laughs> knows almost everyone from the state, mm -hmm. so. <coughs> when do you have a preference as to what you want us to do? These With training the training, training sessions? I kind of like the idea of splitting up and having one go to, you know, so we just cover them. Because I remember last year it came up that at one training session something was said that caused problems. But, um, I don't know, that's just my personal thing, but that's flexible. It would be easy to have us attend two if they're 16. Yeah, yeah. 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 16 too. Yeah. yeah, that would do a full day yeah. of one. I don't know if that. Oh, yeah. So, so that's you know, you could just come just in for one day. Oh, There's eight days. Oh, okay. There you go. There are eight different days for training. Mm -hmm. so. And can't we, um, like, we w would just observe. We'd just be in the room observing. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't, I mean, we wouldn't have to be part of that 40 count, would we? No. It's just that, you know, if, if I know. A class is like full and over full. Some people say, well, that's, I'm going on vacation. It's the only day I can come. So yeah. then I have to overbook <laughs> it. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I just thought if you wanted to let Are me know there what a day lot of changes in the training? Um, mostly in the, the style that it's conducted. It'll be more like a classroom setting, more um, hands on, a little bit more hands on, and more, more connecting with the election workers' questions and answers instead of just sort of the lecture style. Are there very many procedural changes? No. To what they're going to be doing? <coughs> no. The, the training will be more in depth. Um, the last couple of years, the training sessions have been short. We are aiming for a three hour training session. You know, mostly two hours training, leaving an hour for questions. So we want it, okay. we do want to spend more time with the election workers. And do one you, one change we're doing is if they filled out the paperwork for hiring last year, they do not need to fill it out again this year. So, and I, I, the training session, a large chunk of that training session was taken up with everybody oh, yeah. doing their paperwork oh, and turning yeah. it in and getting it approved. And so, this year, we're just, if they've done it already, they're done. Yeah, because That's we're nice. using ESS again this year as the payroll, if they've already filled out the paperwork through them last year, <coughs> ESS has, has that paperwork still. So we won't. Mm -hmm. um, apologize. ESS is a, um, a staffing agency. I think that would be a good way to just. Yeah. Them. But we yeah. used them last year 
to do the payroll function. So they, um, all they did was they, they cut the checks for the election workers. You know, we hire them, we recruit them, we staff the polling places, and then we give the information to ESS and they pay them. <laughs> Some of that used to have to pay them. Instead of 600 people <laughs> going upstairs to do paperwork, well, I hired them. We did it in our office, and it took a long so, time. So yeah, and so this this is you know the first two years, 2010, 2011, that I was in the clerk's office. You know, we were working with employee relations and you know trying to create spreadsheets of all the workers and if they were chairs or if they were you know just a regular election worker, are they paid 950, are they paid 10 dollars an hour? And so, and last year was a huge change because we switched to this uh, payroll agency, and there was a lot of confusion about ESS last year because I, it was not understood, I think both by the election workers <coughs> and the public, that ESS was merely a payroll provider for the municipality. You know, we still hired, we still trained, but um, we are trying to make sure that we're really clear with that this year, that they're just serving the payroll function of the municipality. Everyone that's hired goes through Pat, talks to Pat, gets their paperwork to Pat, and then ESS does the checks. So. And I have a question. Do you ever have your chair judges come in for after the election for a recap of the election? Pat and I have been discussing some different ideas on ways to get more feedback. Um, and we haven't discussed anything of having people come in, but one idea that we have had is um, having like a trifold feedback sheet that we ha ask people to mail in after the election. Having worked elections, I realize that after you work this 16-hour day, you don't want to sit down and write out all your feedback. But I've always found that like the next morning I wake up and I'm thinking about things or throughout the next day, and how great would it be if you just had this little thing that you could kind of jot things down and then drop it in the mail and then for a couple weeks after the election we would get you know sort of more in-depth feedback I think we would want any major issues on election day to come back with the the supplies but then I think people have a lot of good ideas throughout the year we are talking about ways to <coughs> connect with election workers more than just on election day and sort of use people's experience and expertise because we are working to continuously improve the process. So, but well, that would I have been my other suggestion would be a comment sheet. Yeah. And then I have one other suggestion. Do you ever, um, if you have a database of your um, election judges, do you ever put anything like a newsletter out, let's say after the election, and say, here's, you know, how many ballots were counted, here's some issues that came up, here's some things that we want to do. That's um, a really good idea. Um, we used to do that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really get out of magazine last year. We <laughs> wanted to um, send out thank you notes afterwards. I'm I'm big on writing thank you notes, and so Pat and I had discussed um, maybe like a small postcard that we would mail out to all the election workers and just thank them for their service. Just something send out a couple weeks afterwards. Um, but I I kind of like the idea of you know we providing more information with that too just so they know what went into the election you know because when you're at a polling place you just know what's going on at your polling place but mm -hmm. it's such a bigger picture as far as <coughs> voters across <coughs> the city and whatnot so we used to send them out periodically not just around election time but you know like maybe once during the summer and our elections were in September but toward that time period just with an update that's a really good idea uh, one thing that our office has been discussing is how how do we keep elections in people's mind throughout the rest of the year? Because we think it's really important. Sort of, we want to uh, work more with youth workers. And so how do we engage with the community during the rest of the year to get people excited about, you know, youth coming in and working the election and different things like that? Use so it I, as a recruitment tool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea. Uh, one of the other things on the feedback form, I think some of you knew this, you know, and we've probably talked to some of the new um, commissioners about this that was baffling to me, that we had the feedback forms that the chairs were supposed to bring back. And as you all know, we found 141 ballots in one of the um, locked bags in July. Well, but even on the feedback forms, 
the ballot accounted. So when they turned those in, nothing on those forms said we had ballots that weren't, you know, and we put them in the bag. And um, so, so yes, I, I think that we absolutely need to do something that allows us to keep those workers. Um, hi, come on in, May. Um, this is May Main from um, Employee Relations, so she's going to help get some of your paperwork taken care of. Um, did, did you, there's a chair back over here if you want to grab a seat. Um, so yes, we really do know that there has to be a better way to get feedback, and especially we're hoping that it's not when they're stressed out, but I, I think if we would have gotten that feedback, we may not have found 141 ballots in July. In July. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, one other quick question then, and I apologize because I haven't been really that involved with the election process here, but when the ballots come in, do you put like bag one of four, two of four, three of four? Four or four. Um, so we in the past, um, they're just one bag that comes back. It's like a duffel bag from the polling place. And in the past, we have never opened those bags until after the election's been certified. And we actually open them 30 days after the election's been certified when we're shredding the election materials. Uh, we have had discussion. We haven't formalized, formalized the plan that we'll do, but we would like to make sure that those bags are opened before the election is certified and before we shred the materials. So um, that I think is going to be something that we'll probably have the discussion with the election commission of um, <coughs> if that's something that you want to be a part of or if that's a task that the election commission wants to undertake is to open those bags and review the ballots that's in them or you know I think that will be something we'll, we'll have that discussion. So thank you. <laughs> Tough questions. So um, moving on, I'm going to, we have the manual and then election commission procedures, which are, are somewhat one and the same. I guess this is maybe up to the chair if you want to spend time here going over the manual or if people maybe more want to do that on their own to um, review. What about feedback? I think it would take quite a while to do that, but I do think that we want to do that before we begin our duties. Right. What do you, do you want to take it home and read it and then this, um, yeah, because remember we made quite a few changes in our ways of doing business. Okay. This section on the election commission, correct? Yes, I'm sorry, we're in the, the green tab. Uh, how about we just take a few minutes to look at that? Uh, you know, can we, yeah, can we have like five minutes to take a look at Do you want to um, take the moment to look on it on your own, or do you want to go over it as a group? What do you think that was? Um, what the rest of you? Any thoughts? I think certainly we need to read it carefully, but today maybe just kind of peruse it, huh? Yeah. And I would say for those of us that are new, and it was just handed out today, Yeah. I haven't had a chance to look at it yeah. at all. So um, I would like to look at it in more depth down the road, but I agree with you. We could. Yeah. Why don't we, um, my thoughts is let's take this home and look at it, and then uh, we will convene and discuss it more in depth when we that sounds great. Work. And if there's any um, proposed changes, I we you know we we welcome that discussion, and we can make those changes and get new. I hope it's understandable. You, you guys have you know quite a bit of experience, but when I first read it, I thought, well, <laughs> I'll just wait till the first day to really yeah. that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> well, this is the real guts of what we do as a yes. board, is it? Exactly. Has this been changed from last year? Not drastically. Okay. So, and that's uh, that that's is the manual that's not been changed. Yeah. That's something that you know we wanted to leave up more to to the commission as to where what they wanted. You know, we can, do you can we where, what we did with all those changes that we uh, we turned them in 
to Amanda, but I have a copy of my notes at home. You know, my <laughs> election category. Um, can we, as a board, reconvene like next week? Yeah, like so that, you'll need to just let me know things. what day because we'll need to notice it and calendar it. And okay. Then, and Joyce, it. are you are you available for that? I, it sounds like you're a busy woman, so. Um, you pick a day and I'll work my schedule around it. I don't have anything scheduled for next week yet. I do plan to go to Juno either next week or the following week, but it's up in the air, okay. so just for the day. I'll be away next week. Oh, okay. I'll be away for the next three weeks. Okay. Let's uh, uh, let's do this right now. Get out your calendars. And <laughs> you leave when? Um, Monday night. Monday night. On the 4th, right? That night. Uh, yeah, at midnight. So I am available that day. Are you good? Okay, so you will be okay if we met on Monday. Yes. What do you think about that? Because I definitely like to have Monday, it here. February fourth. Yeah. Is that possible, guys? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Does that give you time for no <laughs> Yeah. What time would you like to have the meeting? Mm -hmm. I thought this was great, but well. You are probably the primary one we need to work around here. I don't know. Whenever I go any place, it's like madhouse um, for a while. The day, the day I'm getting ready. <laughs> oh, that well, if that's not true with me. That okay. I don't have that much to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any children or a husband, so I don't have anything to do. So, um, what I about ten o'clock? Ten o'clock sounds good. Ten a.m. And we're still on talking February fourth. Okay. Perfect. Ten a.m. Yeah. Is that all right? At Muni. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Amanda would hear for us. Yes, I will send out an email with uh, with whatever room is available oh. and good. Okay. information. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's a good idea. <laughs> I like that because I wouldn't same like to same, yeah. 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 same, same place. Be a little bit important. And then yeah. whatever yeah. changes that you propose, we can our office will go ahead and, and incorporate those into a manual and then reprint them for everyone. You know the manual that you took. The old manual that you took. Our oh, your old one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have? I'm wondering if I didn't mark in the yeah. changes that yeah. we had talked about mm -hmm. last year. I don't know. Well, I have my copy at home. I don't know if it's complete, but we just yeah. turned in some of ours. Yeah. This one's yours. This one. Uh, yeah, I think that that other one might be mine, Pat. Because I have. Oh. Okay. So yeah. just, um, if it's okay with the chair, um, okay. maybe look through it and then bring it back. So we're, that, we're talking both four and five encompassing that. You said they're pretty much the same, the commission procedures and the manual? Yeah, well, you know, it's one and the same. Same booklet, same paper. Well, there's not a, no, I can. yeah, okay. that's that, just that one booklet. Um, and are m members of the body interested in having a DREMS training? What's Absolutely. What's, what's DREMS? What's DREMS? DREMS, is DREMS is the, the voter registration what? database. The state computer database for the voters. Oh, yes. I want it. You want I, it. I want it. You want <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm interested. I would, I would, I would we, we did it last year and we want it. <laughs> okay. Um, would you prefer to have that in February or in March? Closer to I would when? Like, I personally think it would be great to have it closer right to when we start. Absolutely. So March. Okay. okay. As close to the 26th as possible. <laughs> yeah. I will <laughs> get in touch with you regarding a date for that as it gets closer to March. I think like the 22nd or the 25th would be ideal. Uh, we begin, 26th. we begin the 26th, mm -hmm. right? Is that 26th? We we'll start the equipment on the 26th. Right. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> So we, we will we place. will be in contact with you on the best date with our office for that. Okay. Um, and so the um, as far as number seven tracking time goes, we are still continuing to use the Chrono system. But one thing that we have May here. May come on in. We are going to provide everybody with an ID badge, and you will be able to clock in and out using your ID badge. So you will not for the commission members who were here last year. There was a nice. lot of confusion on the. It's a complicated oh. system, but we will just provide you with an ID badge and you will 
swipe it in and swipe it out when you leave. Oh, you wow. If, if I could just insert here. Um, I see we're establishing the training dates. That's REMS. Yeah. But also at our uh, next meeting, how about we look at our calendars to see what kind of training dates you would want to commit to as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that okay. That's good. So as, as far as tracking time, we just have a lot of thanks that we have to give to May and employee relations. You know, they've, they've made this suggestion that, you know, your Kronos ID badge, there's a station out here in the lobby and you just swipe it in front of it when you come in and you just swipe it I'm when sorry. you leave. Oh, there is just no heaven. reason for you to have to do all the <laughs> right. Day and say, Would you so um, me? <laughs> so one of the other things that employee relations suggested, and we really appreciate this. Um, May's gonna. She's here. She's gonna do your photos. She's got all your building access, so she's gonna do a photo for you to get your Muni ID, and that's what you'll swipe in and out with. All right, and that's your timekeeping. If you have any problems with it, you know, um, you can just come to Amanda or Pat, and and if they're not available, you can come to me and we'll get it corrected. Like if you forget to punch in, just come and tell us, write us a note when you got here. So, um, I guess, um, are we ready for yeah. May to okay. give everybody the employee relations spiel? Oh, I don't have much of this. <laughs> so, Joyce, do you all want to go around the room and introduce yourselves to May so that she knows you? Joyce, go ahead around the corner. Vicky. Vicky. I have one for you. I'm good, Matthew. Correct. Mr. Kimmy. Alice Hanley. And I'm Beatty Spray. All right. And I'm Peggy Bowers. Okay, and you yeah, need no, that's oh, yeah. that's that's it. Just that's the three it? new ones. No, and then you need oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, and now you need some photos. Yeah. All right. I do have a question. I, I received this to fill out again. Is that what um, is that that you received? Huh? The one <laughs> Shame on you. Well, I said if you don't fill this out, well, we're going to take income tax. Okay. Do so I need that again? They sent it to you. When did they send it to you? I got one too. <laughs> Didn't you? It says it's going to expire on February 15th. So what they will do is if you want it to remain in it's for a two year term, then you can. Is that we just one? Then you can uh, submit one each year, but if you are no longer. Mm -hmm. But if you want to change it, then you can fill it out and send it to them again. But if you want it to leave it as it is, then we'll just leave it as it is. Yeah, I'm fine with it as it is. Okay, so besides the three yeah, new members, so. does everybody else have an ID badge from last year? Probably not. Probably I think not. I still do at home. Uh, but it, it probably doesn't have the yeah, right. Have the are you referring yeah. to oh, this okay. one, or it's, it's a card with your photo on it? Did, oh no, we don't. Yeah, we never did. Okay, never did that. Well, this okay. is all we ever get. So, so yeah. everybody yeah. gets. And then, are we going to have brown wall yeah. or the green wall? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the lighter? All right, um, I'll get out of the way then. Oh yeah, there's a there's a municipal seal out there. Oh, it's gonna be a white passport headshot. All right, green or beige? You hear this one? All right, and that and so therefore I can go ahead. Peggy says my hair looks great. For the three new members, for the three new members, if you have training. Um, an address and a mailing address. If the two are the same, then 
Um, you don't have to worry about this form, but if it's different, then you need to fill out an emergency form. Yeah, I was trying to just because if we have to address a mailing address and a home address, we don't know which one to send you. Um, but if they're both the same, then it's we can just choice. We can just write same. So, but I, if, but yeah. I mean, look, the week same, before yeah, we begin. Yeah. And if on all the other documents you choose the, the same address, then right. I know it's one solid so address. Okay. But sometimes After people give us a PO box as well as the residential tree, address. I mean, I, I and just we don't know what to kind of close Okay, do we need to fill all this out then? Or do we forget it all? So we don't forget it all. If you would like. Just maybe a name and a phone number. Okay. All right, so who's ready for a photo? Oh, yeah. I know. Yes. You have to get your mind well, around it each year. You're going to have to let us know. Yeah. We're going to have to give it a try. That's right. You know, we have those I think we can we use the spot over right here. So no, I could always, okay, ladies, I'll do it first. Okay. okay. I can always this catch up with you for coffee or something. Too. Yeah. Okay. Here. Do we live just down the street. Just put me wherever. Let's try because you're the first one. Let's see which shot. No. Out in the general area. Five minutes from the house. Can you please write down your hair? Yeah, it's got all of our new manual. Any other information? Nope. That would be like Maybe we could to the right home same day. Thank you. Um, I think, I think Barbara probably has All right. Who else is ready for it? Eugene has a request. Oh, Could you make wait a minute. Chairman? No, I'm sorry. Eugene needs to make his request to me. I'm sorry. No, what this is, is the commission. I want. This, I, I want to speak to the commission, not you. This is sure. the commission. The 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 <laughs> there we go. I want to like to give right here. Here. a little, make a comment for you. And then we'll leave the rest of the party. Okay. 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 Yeah, and I want you to oh, make me look like the twenty six. Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the my position is that I don't know yes. this yes. is a I'd like dark hair is confidential. For example, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, <laughs> with, um, this is confidential. Oh, okay. well, this is yet. confidential because so it must it be your address. So. I'm asking you, um, I don't want to see it. What I no. told you look at is it. that I would check. Okay. And I get him the information. I violated the being so by not having the information available. Oh, what do you need that one plus? I However, it. It, 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 well, I probably don't see it on the back. I'm going to need a security. I'm going to call security. You start. I want to get the spelling right. I know you go right I've got so much paper. I want to get the spelling right. I know you go right here. I've got so much paper. I'm Oh, I see. So that's, I'm going to go so over there. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, they were in my folder. Oh, oh and ready? Oh, okay. Uh, that's right. That's okay. Okay. So, you know what? Barbara needs to finish this conversation. It won't go that far down. Are we back? We are. Okay. I know. I turned it. Okay. Um, and, and I am being <laughs> honest, I don't know all of them either, but I know that I'm not going to give out what was that? Yeah. Can you write down there. your name so I can have the correct right. name? Yeah. 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 Do you want me to? That's fine. Yeah. Look who's here. Well, this, no. subject, this subject did not come up, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it went forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, to everyone that's here that doesn't know, I would like to introduce the assembly chair, Ernie Hall. And Ernie, just a reminder, um, Sue Kinney, I'm just going to go around the room here. Sue. Alice, Alice Handley, Hanley. of course. <laughs> um, Katie Strang. Katie Strang. Hi, Ernie. Peggy you. Baumeister. Hi. Ernie, this is our one of our wonderful employee relations people, May Main. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Our new commissioner, Joyce Anderson. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. And Vicki Cantrell. Hi. Hi. And of course, you know Gwen. Pleasure again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So thank you for coming. Let me it, right? Yes. Well, I Can had to stop right. by. <laughs> Can you write down your full name? be able to tell each and every one of you how much I appreciate and the assembly body as a whole everything that you do for us and, you and to tell you what a pleasure it is to work for you uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the joy that we get is that uh, you're the guys that run this operation and we're here to uh, help you do your job 
in whatever manner that we may possibly be able to do that. And I am so looking forward to a really great election. <laughs> so are we. Uh, has, uh, has no issues. Uh, that last year was a real wake-up call for all of us. And let me assure you, we heard it loud and clear. And uh, I'm, I'm delighted because we put together an amazing staff in the clerk's office. Amanda is, uh, this is her forte now. Uh, she learned through the test of fire last year. And uh, I've never seen anybody remain any more calm in the eye of a storm than what Amanda did. Uh, she was absolutely amazing. And uh, with the experience that she got there, she's only going to be better this year. So again, thank you for what you do. and. Uh, I look forward to uh, being able to work for you and make sure that we uh, move very gently through this next election. <laughs> Thank you. And quickly. And quickly. <laughs> yeah. I glad you added that one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Who do you have left? Okay. Vicki. Do you want to get your picture? Thank you for coming by. Thank you. I had hoped to be here sooner, but the speech went longer than uh, I had anticipated. Okay, this wall here? Yeah. Okay. So, and is that all we need to do today? Yes, we're, we're all okay. done. Um, okay. I'm going to have May check to make sure she's yeah, got good. the info back yeah, from the new folks. The okay. Um, oh. If any of the old folks, <laughs> and, and I mean... <laughs> Continuing members have any employment questions and they would be the person that you would ask them. One of the things that we are going to do um, that employee relations has suggested is your badges will be in the clerk's office. So we'll give them to you on um, so you can come to our office, get your badge, and then you know, punch in and punch out. But then during the week that you're working or the weeks that you're working, you can just keep them. But otherwise, they'd like them to stay in the clerk's office. All right? What about parking this year? Oh, we will be getting parking passes. And so you'll be parking in the garages. But um, for the next time when you come back on Monday for the meeting, we'll get bagged out back again. Okay. So we'll, we'll give you the bad um, the parking passes mm -hmm. right before take it you come in. Make it yeah. Home. So that if we come in for training sessions, perhaps. Yeah. Um, just, just when you come in for training sessions, and and we'll send an email out with all this information. You'll do the same thing that the election workers do. We have set up an arrangement with Easy Park where people park in the garage, you get a ticket, you bring it in, and we will validate the ticket while you're in the training, give back to you, and then you can just go out again. So we'll be using the garages, but in a somewhat different way. Sure. Because we'll and then you asked for this. The 600 different workers coming yeah. in and out. So we will be able to deposit. We will always use you. this 7th oh. Avenue garage. That's the taller garage. Okay. Where, where, where the, the uh, bus depot no. is. And, okay. and if you need I'll, I'll handicap parking, there is handicap parking in the big garage. Um, and if you do need it in behind the facility for the commission, we can probably make arrangements for you to park back here. <coughs> Just let us know. We're happy to, yeah. to work with you on anything. Well, it's wonderful seeing our friends' full faces, and it's wonderful seeing the new new people. It looks like we have a great team again this year. So I look forward to seeing you Monday at 10 o'clock, right and early. Monday at 10 a.m. and figure around about two hours? I hope so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if that's all we have to do, I think we can probably yeah, just do them. Thank just, you. Thank you all for accommodating my traveling. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, uh, we recycled.